An obsession in pop culture that I've been trying to replicate is the idea of the machine gun crossbow, a machine capable of flinging a high rate of arrows or bolts towards the target. I've previously explored some creative designs from ancient China and some kind of crazy designs by Leonardo da Vinci, both proving some success but in practicality for being useful in the field. But perhaps most effective and the weapon that potentially saw the most use in the actual field was just strapping a bunch of rockets to arrows and letting them all go. It's perhaps not accurately a machine gun, but it'll definitely send a lot of arrows all at once. So that's what we're gonna try and do and replicate this ancient technology and strap a bunch of rockets to arrows and fire them off at once. What's the worst that could happen? First up, to be clear, these videos are intended to be educational with hands-on experimentation of trying to recreate history it is not intended to be instructional. Working with gunpowder can be incredibly dangerous and should only be done if you have proper knowledge, know how to take the proper precautions when working with it, which we have tried to do as much as possible throughout all of this. Do not attempt anything in this video. This is our second video exploring the history of firearms and black powder. As previously mentioned in the first video where we explored the origins of black powder weapons, YouTube's policy is a little vague on the laws around showing firearms manufacturing. So if you want to see this series to completion, I'd recommend supporting us on Patreon, as we don't really know when these videos might get demonetized or age restricted. In our last video, we touched on the earliest and first uses of black powder, which mostly included a lot of incendiaries used for spreading fire, but also showed an early understanding of the projectile potential of black powder with its so-called flying rats. On its own, black powder is not very explosive. It will just burn incredibly fast. However, once you start restricting where the heat and pressure can go, you can capture that quick forming pressure in a single direction, resulting in a lot of force. It's generally believed this was first used as a fire lance to burn your enemy, starting around the 10th to 12th century. But we'll be covering that in the next video. In this one, we're gonna cover what happened when they realized they could flip it around and use it as an engine. In our previous video, we kind of accidentally invented this by making our gunpowder a little too powerful and a little bit too contained which resulted in our crossbow bolt just taking off on its own. At first, this was used on standard arrows still launched from a bow or crossbow, where the rocket would then just extend its range. But soon, once they refined it enough, they realized it could launch itself, and dozens of them could be launched all at once in a barrage. So to start things out, we experimented with a variety of different options, starting with bamboo tubes that had a nozzle drilled into the end of them. Eventually, we found that we could use paper tubes with wood caps glued on it, which were a little bit lighter and a little bit more powerful. The best result was by drilling a channel down through the packed black powder so that more of it could burn all at once and release the energy much faster. This first one is like a flared nozzle shape. Um, otherwise, it's the exact same diameter nozzle that we've been using in the past, so we'll see. Once we started to get some decent results from our arrows, it was time to build the actual launching device, called a nest of bees. For that, we're going to need to drill a bunch of holes to hold each of the arrows. Speaking of rockets, thanks to today's sponsor of Rocket Money. Have you ever realized you forgot to unsubscribe from a service or just hate having to go through all the hidden pages to unsubscribe from everything? Luckily, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, has been a total game changer. Rocket Money is the personal financial app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better, all in one place. Personally, I love using Rocket Money to cancel unwanted subscriptions with just a couple of taps. I mean, how many times have you signed up for a free trial only to completely forget about it and see the charges show up month after Per month. Uh, what's even better is how it helps me set a budget. It breaks down spending so I can keep my finances on track, especially while saving for big plans like an upcoming trip. Another awesome feature is the ability to lower your bills. You can upload your internet bill and Rocket Money could actually negotiate with your provider to get a lower rate. It's like having a personal financial assistant right in your pocket. If you're ready to take control of your finances and save more, check out Rocket Money by heading to rocketmoney.com slash htme or click the link in the description to get started for free. Trust me, you'll love it. Once we started to get some decent results from our arrows, it was time to build the actual launching device called a nest of bees. For that, we're gonna need to drill a bunch of holes to hold each of the arrows. So I had Theo forge a new hand drill, which we haven't made yet, a spoon auger.
With the spoon auger, we can now start drilling out some of the holes for our nested bees. Next we'll need the actual sides for the nest. Those will be six identical tapered boards. And then each of them needs to be beveled so they'll fit together. For that, I also had Theo attempt to make another tool we've been missing for a while, a hand plane. And then with using the hand plane, I was able to bevel the edges to the correct depth. So before I made the big one, I actually made a few small scale ones. So everything was gonna to fit together right. Actually, I ended up with a pretty cool little product here and designed it to store pencils or pens. It also happens to be the perfect size to put bottle rockets in and basically use it as a miniature rocket launcher. So this might be a good product to launch a new venture that I've been looking to start for some time. So I'm launching a little business here to kind of explore that called how to make history to try and sell kits and items allowing you to go hands-on with some of the more unique and overlooked technologies of the past. This is gonna include replicas of some technologies I've made on the series, miniatures of some of our larger projects, kits to recreate some of the historic beers. I'm still finalizing things and getting ready to scale production, but I wanted to do kind of a soft launch with this product. So check it out and see if there's anything there that you might want to try and uh, go a little bit more hands-on on making history. With several dozen rocket engines launching from the device, and at least a few of them likely to fail, making sure the nest of bees doesn't burn up on a single use is gonna be pretty important. For fireproofing, we tried the Japanese method, Shosugiban which is done by charring the outside of the wood, scraping it with a wire brush, and then treating it with oil. Lastly, all the depictions of the nested bees have some really cool engravings on it. Fortunately, thanks to OM Tech, they lent me their laser engraver to try out, and I was able to use it to engrave a pretty cool looking dragon under my nested bees. If you're interested in checking out this laser cutter yourself, check out the link in the description. Lastly, with everything assembled, it's time to take our nest of bees to the range and test it out. For a safe firing location to test everything, we headed to the private firing range of the elusive Sandlands, which I previously had the opportunity to check out and explore. Huge thank you to Gabe from Save It For Parts for hooking us up with this testing range, as most ranges were not too thrilled to accommodate us. Here we go. Please don't blow. Iron hole! <laughs> <laughs> so we have our nest of bees right here. 
Do a little bit of artwork with the yeah. laser engraver. So hopefully it survives it. It looks pretty cool. So we got this loaded up with a few test arrows. Just hold it like this and fire. And then everything that way dies. Due to the tendency of our homemade rockets to sometimes explode, we didn't really want to risk holding it during our test firing, but I did shove a few Roman candles in there so we could at least get a feel for what it would look like on the battlefield. But let's put some actual rockets in there now. So we're gonna do a test shot with about four arrows and we'll kind of scale up and see how well we can set it to launch a bunch of them all at once. The main goal is uh, just a solid barrage of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> now this might be kind of chaotic. Fired. Hey, your fire retardant worked really well, too. <laughs> well, I'm scared. <laughs> Too much chooch. Just one hit. Uh, Alright, so we're back from the range and I have to say that the results are definitely very uh, awe-inspiring, I think. But that being said, they're very much never really intended for accuracy. They're just kind of a shock and awe weapon. At least in this case, you're just launching tons of arrows everywhere and with it, you're just creating a large cloud of black powder smoke. It is very violent, very quick, and very much everywhere. Ultimately, rocket arrows had used for a very long period of time, up to like the 1500s and beyond, and kind of slowly evolved into more and more standard rockets, which continue to be used throughout history and are even used today. Basically, rockets have not gone away since their invention. This is kind of as far as we're gonna go because our next interest is in basically turning this around and you put this at the end of the stick and then rather than propelling your weapon, you're shooting flames out. And the next steps after that were the realization that you could put small rocks and stuff in there and shoot those out. And then eventually basically evolving into the actual cannon, realizing you can do some serious damage with that. I think in like the kind of ongoing question of, is this a gun? I would say, no, this is definitely a black powder based projectile weapon. The next one where we get into the firelands will definitely be very much the gray area on if this is a gun. As I continue to state in these videos, I don't really know when we're gonna get potentially demonetized or age restricted. So if you're enjoying these and you wanna see them continued, consider supporting on Patreon. And to everybody who's already supporting us on Patreon, thanks for your support. Without you, this won't be possible. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.